Attention ladies and gentlemen, Gungans and Droids, this is your Grand Admiral Arnold, director of the video gaming division here at the Galactic Empire. And boy, I got a treat for you all today, right now. The Malevolence is the freshest capital ship off the press, and look at this, we got a treat. Luckily for you, ladies and gentlemen, today we got gameplay of this beloved capital ship right here. Ain't she a beauty? Today we're gonna answer the question, is this capital ship worth farming, or should you go down the negotiator route? And I wanna give a big shout out to my guildmate, Daker Melilo, for providing this footage to all of us here in this royal empire could learn more about this capital ship. Let's get over to the command station, and let's see what this puppy can do. Woo! We got a lot of fun stuff in this video today tons of footage provided by my guild member because there's a big question right now should i be going after the malevolence or the negotiator i myself i'm going all in on the malevolence which i'll explain a bit more at the end of the video but if you want my honest opinion right now going all in on the negotiator is probably the way to go this ship is just okay for offense going up against the negotiator not good on defense but i think it has a lot of potential going into the future as i'll explain today so let's go roll some footage and let me give you my initial impressions on this ship it beats Akbar's ship perfectly fine. We're kind of getting to the point where now the Akbar and the Falcon are no longer that dominant. The Negotiator handles it quite fine, as we kind of see to this date. The Malevolence is also in that situation where it can handle the Akbar and Falcon lineup. So if your concern is still the Akbar and Falcon uh, fleets out there, the ship is going to handle it perfectly fine. However, the Negotiator battles are a lot more difficult. And I, we got to preface this with a couple of things here. The Negotiator lineup has a lot more Galactic Republic ships that people have relicked out. And just in general, there are more Galactic Republic ships in this game than there are Separatist and Droid ships. So the Malevolence is kind of at a disadvantage in this regard. And then furthermore, beyond that, the Galactic Republic ships we have in the game are pretty darn fantastic. Ahsoka Tano 5s, then we have the Clone Sergeant, the most recent BTL, Jedi Knight Anakin, of course. This Starfighter is one of the best ships we have in the game currently. The Negotiator has a lot of tools in its kit. It has dazes, it has concussions. Concussion mines, it has a lot of stuff baked into its kit, and of course, the unending loyalty, which protects the Galactic Republic ships if they need to get back on their feet. Whereas the Malevolence, it's kind of in a spot where you really only have two good Separatist ships, and you're kind of mishmashing whatever Separatist Genosians we have left over, and the IG-88 ship. In fact, the IG-88 ship, according to my guild member, he thinks this ship is absolutely necessary in the starting slot if you want a good chance at winning. It's not even a guarantee, because the thing about IG-88, let's take a quick break and hop over to the game the thing about the ig 2000 the fleet that ig88 pilots and this isn't a bad character to gear up it does form the grievous nuke team which is one of the best counters to the darth revan lineup and its ship is just okay it was never really that fantastic but now with grievous in the mix trying to get together a droid slash separatist fleet together and the problem is the hyena bomber could only tank for so long by the way completely forgot to mention it my guild member who sent this footage has a seven star hyena bomber and vulture droid so he has those ships pretty much much maxed out as far as possible and of course Grievous's ship is five stars gear 13 relic seven but they talked a lot about IG 2000 to me and the, the reason why is this unique ability helps bolster the survivability because the hyena bomber can only tank for so long it gets wiped out quite quickly and luckily the IG 2000 fleet or ship you get eight percent health at the start of each turn and it also gains eight percent officer each debuff enemy and other droid allies gain half these amounts which means at the start of each turn your separatist droid ships are going to be getting four percent health at the start of each of their turns so it helps a little bit with survivability which is the one thing this ship is definitely lacking for the malevolence really the main problem that you guys are going to see in pretty much all of this footage really comes down to the hound tooth yes to this day over a year and a half later almost two years later this ship is still so dominant and so annoying to deal with and unfortunately the malevolence does not really have a lot of tools to deal with Bosk and the Hound Tooth. And they said if they're if they are boss, the enemy that, that has a Bosk ship, if they are relicked out of their minds and have high gear beyond gear 12, they are extremely difficult for the Malevolence and the Separatists to take out. That the Malevolence probably still has a lot to build up to because the developers already kind of hinted at that they're just kind of getting started with the Malevolence fleet lineup. We really only got two brand new ships for the lineup and the, uh, the Geonosians really are just okay, but they're nowhere near as good as with the Malevolence negotiator as well as the akbar fleet have to offer so we talked this to waga what other uh separatist droid ships they could be adding potentially to the malevolence lineup so if you're someone that's looking at what's gonna get me the best bang for my buck right now 
definitely the negotiator and i'm going to highlight more of a why that's the case in a few seconds here but what are the good things about this lineup as it currently stands well one the great thing is with the vulture droid you're able to constantly summon extra vulture droids whenever it this a vulture droid is being defeated if there's a separatist fleet uh a capital ship present and there's an allied combatant you get to keep calling in vulture droids. however it kind of seemed like this may be a little bug they mentioned this as well when providing me the footage and i kind of noticed it myself if there are five if there are five ships on the field on your side and a vulture droid gets destroyed which means you have four slots and one empty one it doesn't seem to call in another vulture droid to fill in that last fifth slot so this may be slightly bugged and of course not having all five ships on the field not getting those extra vulture droids does cause a little bit of a problem but the nice thing is these vulture droids keep coming on the field and they kind of even though they're very frail they kind of just act as bait for them to get blown away because you'd much rather a random vulture droid get blown away than perhaps your ig88 ship or perhaps your hyena bomber the vulture droid although they can be quite annoying with all the buzz droids they're afflicting they're expendable that's the whole point of the malevolence's lineup is that vulture droids are completely expendable and if one gets lost grievous just throws another one in their place and on top of that when because of the whole idea that vulture droids are expendable you kind of want these vulture droids to be trashed out by the opponent because keep in mind the leadership ability on grievous's malevolence allows the malevolence to gain 30 percent terminator whenever an allied vulture droid is being defeated so if you're just constantly calling in vulture droids they're getting scrapped by the enemy that's going to allow your capital ship to get more turns and to summon more vulture droids on his own to get more overcharge because the more overcharge in the field the more deadly the the, the ships become and ultimately you want to get to as fast as possible to fire the ion cannon the ultimate ability on this ship which has a cooldown of five and that greatly gets uh, addressed through the whole ability of the vulture droids granting termiter to to the malevolence so the and the, the, the thing is on top of that is that the, i was kind of told from the battles they have that sometimes the battles are not going to well but once greece finally fires the ion cannon everything turns around because remember you remove protection off the ships you're fighting up against you stun the capture which buys you a lot of time to do what you got to do and removing protection especially from the hounds too allows you to knock out these ships a lot faster but as it stands there's still a lot that's kind of missing from this really if it wasn't for the hyena bomber being able to ignore taunts it would be kind of difficult to kind of even try to win these battles so there's still a lot missing and another thing is there's not really a way to get an early taunt on the malevolence unless you have the hound's tooth to kind of taunt for you you have to kind of wait until the hyena bomber is unique gets triggered and the problem is because of that your starting lineup is exposed and if igd gets obliterated too early you lose all that juicy health recovery that's kind of needed to keep your fleet up and running so here's my initial opinion on the malevolence i think it's a ship that's progressively going to get better right now it seems like the negotiator is definitely the more logical place to go to because one right now we're seeing that you need a seven star negotiator to participate in the light side genosis territory battles, the hardest content we've ever seen the dark side genosis territory battles is a lot easier for the cat capital ships and the ships we have for the dark side because the hound's tooth all you need is the chimera and the hound's tooth and the chimera just allows the hound's tooth to get the, the soak up damage upon damage upon damage it's the, basically it's impossible for the enemy ships and dark side genos to take out the hound's tooth and then the chimera can keep one shotting all of your opposing ships so the dark side territory for ships not a lot of problems there it's the light side genos part because mace windu has a hard time akbar has a hard time it really seems like it's geared towards the negotiator and of course there's a lot of special missions and with it being hard getting the <laughs> points as it is as it's stands in the current place for Geno Soteri to sort of public offensive that might be something to consider furthermore right now we have a lot of mirror matches going on with the Kenobi's negotiator and obviously having the more more stars in your capital ship means you're going to get a faster negotiator win in those mirror match situations and in general once you get the seven stars for your Kenobi negotiator you can get that last slot unlocked for the negotiator for the reinforcements and just right now as it stands the negotiator lineup is just looking better overall it has better ships than when the negotiator was launched it already had a fleet to work with the malevolence does not and also the malevolence to really get the most out of it right now you really need to get a maxed out ultra droid maxed out hyena bomber to really get some sort of results so it's more of a whaley type of fleet right now that doesn't get you as bang of a buck for the negotiator but as developers kind of hinted at next year sometime they're coming back to the clone wars since season seven is going to be released so there's a good chance they're going to be adding some more ships to this lineup for the malevolence to improve and get more to a negotiator level right now 
It's not a fleet that's going to make or break you. But the reason why I'm farming is one, so I can make videos. But secondly, I'm looking for more of a Grand Arena perspective. My Akbar fleet is not really that good to be placing on defense in Grand Arena. It would be nice having another capital ship to potentially put something maybe a little bit more challenging than the home one. So hence, if I have a five-star negotiator and as well as uh, Malevolence, I could put Malevolence on defense, for example, in Grand Arena and then use my negotiator for offense. So the, re the point I'm getting at is you have more ca capital ships to choose from. And because really, to be honest, 39,000 currency to unlock the Malevolence, that gets you a lot of negotiator blueprints. So there's a big trade up here. Guild event token currency is hard to come by. For anyone to really max out both of these ships at seven stars, it's going to be well into next year sometime in 2020 so for right now my honest opinion for you guys if you're trying to make the most out of ships for grand arena territory battles you most likely are going to want to get the negotiator but if you're looking for something to prepare you for the future because i think this ship will get better in the future and it also it's nice having several capital ships to play with when you're going into grand arena maybe the malevolence is somewhere to go to but right now that negotiator just has the upper hand but that may be turned around sometime down the road again big shout out to my guildmate daker melly low thank you so much for helping the community kind of get a more informed decision on which way to go to because with the currency crunch as it is right now i want to make sure each and every one of you guys who are watching this video makes a good informed decision comment down below on your thoughts are you going the malevolence route or the negotiate route would love to hear you guys thoughts leave a like comment subscribe so you're not missing a thing and i'll talk to all of you lovely people in the next video peace out everybody